This is a really interesting interview here. I have Sebastian from the Cardano Foundation, and we're going to talk about the Cosmos SDK and the work that the foundation are doing at the moment to build up some interoperable parts to try and build this uh, interoperable bridge between Cosmos SDK and Cardano. There's lots of bits of information I'm missing here, but thankfully Sebastian is joining us to talk us, talk, take us through all of this and explain it all to uh, us. So Sebastian, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Hi, Peter. So I, I'd love to uh, firstly understand your role at the foundation and how you got into Cardano. Uh, it's, it's a pretty cool role that you have. Indeed, yeah. Uh, so, so maybe I'm the most luckiest person in, in the Cardano space, if that's not too bold to claim. <laughs> but um, yeah, basically, what I'm doing, I'm my title is director of engineering. So this means I I can work with uh, some of the smartest engineers in the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, those are, for example, the people from from the Aiken team. Um, we've got the people that that have been working on uh, our new Cardano Explorer. Uh, also, the Identity Water team. That's those are just of some of the projects uh, we are working on, and I'm basically trying to help the guys to yeah cope with the administrative churn and um, figure out new ideas and where we could use and put their talent to to good use for the Cardano ecosystem. And besides this, of course, I get the chance to talk to a lot of community groups. Um, about their exciting projects, um, which is one actually of the best, one of the best parts of of my job. That is. Really and what cool. brought me to Cardano? I I don't know. Um, I think the typical <laughs> developer story. Um, I started. I, I got interested in blockchain not so much because of cryptocurrencies and the like, but more of um, the decentralization aspect. I really love what kind of communication patterns can be implemented privacy preserving communication patterns uh, can be implemented via blockchain different types of blockchain networks um and uh, then i had a hobby project side project building a game with a buddy of mine and um, we wanted to implement the reward system and the communication uh, system on top of a blockchain network. Started off with Ethereum, figured out, oh, gas fees are pretty high, uh, <laughs> looking into yeah. some roll-up solutions, but then also came across Cardano. Um, and I think the first real contact I had in 2022, 20, no, 2021, uh, during the summit. And I was uh, pretty amazed by the different talks um, from Charles, from the team, uh, from the projects building on top of Cardano. And this is what got me hooked because I really love the mission of Cardano as it's not just here to be the next cryptocurrency, but it's here yeah. to, to help us Im improve the way how we are living. Yeah, that's yeah. maybe a bit too much, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I think a lot of people uh, love that vision and the mission of uh, what Cardano is trying to achieve. So hence, a lot of us are in the ecosystem. Now, you're working on the Cosmos side of things. And I did a video about this about a month ago, talking about the levels of interoperability that can happen from this. And you know, I, I absolutely love this. And it's really good to know that the foundation's working on it. Uh, what exactly are you guys working on and what kind of impact will this have? Like what, what, what will we see out of it? So first of all, let me manage expectations a bit. Uh, I'd say the project is still in the engineering phase and we are trying to figure out a few things uh, if they are at all doable with Cardano because um, this inter-blockchain communication protocol, which we are trying to bring to Cardano, um, requires actually a feature like fast finality, which is not just given by itself, just because of the architecture, how Cardano is built. Um, and the impact that we want to bring is basically, we want to provide the ecosystem with a building block that allows people to plug application-specific sidechains to Cardano and so give them a bit more flexibility when implementing their ap applications um, because you can very well address a bit better than with the mainnet uh, scalability things, um, data privacy issues. And of course, um, if you're looking at IBC and then the Cosmos SDK, of course, you're solving a few or adding a bit more interoperability capabilities uh, to Cardano because it would allow basically to bridge to all 
um, blockchains that also support this specific communication standard. Um, so this is foremost the idea with uh, working on those building blocks. That's how I would call it because we are not just we're not we're definitely not working on just a side chain um, because I think that that wouldn't bring bring a lot of value to the ecosystem. We are really working on enabling others to then use this framework that we are building building to bring up their own side chains. Gotcha. Okay. It, it really seems like uh, 2024 is the year of side chains and you know, this, this whole premise of uh, apps or even um, uh, application specific side chains uh, for, for various dApps will start to appear and we'll see a lot more of them. So uh, having some of the work done by the foundation, I think is very valuable to help these projects and uh, different ecosystems uh, start to investigate and see if they can actually go forth with something like this. So it sounds like we'll see side chains uh, bridges on top of that as well to connect Cardano with these various side chains and then interoperability with various other dApps, blockchains that use the Cosmos SDK um, ICP. Well, what, what type of projects are using it? Like, uh, Can you name a couple that are uh, quite well known uh, that use Cosmos? <laughs> Actually, I'd say I, I'd like to refer to there. There's a nice website that's called uh, Map of Zones, uh, where you can basically see what's what's going on uh, in the Cosmos space. Um, just a project that we've been, for example, talking to is uh, called Osmosis, and uh, they are, for example, they're pretty much a Dex. I'd say I hope they they don't beat me up after uh, giving <laughs> them this title, but they are like the biggest Dex, for example, in the. Um, uh, in the cosmos space and um, bridging over to our ecosystem would on the one hand help them um, to to increase their market but also would give cardano projects the opportunity to be traded uh, on that specific dex and then have their assets exchanged with uh, different uh, cosmos projects there is another project called axelar uh, the axelar network that's pretty much an, an interoperability layer operated on a cosmos sdk based blockchain but then also bridging out to other um, networks like for example ethereum so what you would get from is um, not via direct communication but at least via some multi hops um, you would get the chance to even exchange with um, this specific network and then what we are also looking into and that's probably interesting is a lot of tooling in the blockchain space and a lot of the enterprises that we also want to bring as the foundation to Cardano to collaborate with us, they are kind of primed, unfortunately, because uh, Ethereum was like the first smart major smart contract platform out there by the by the tooling that evolves around the, the EVM. And um, we all know there's been uh, the great Mukomeda project from DC Spark, where we brought some EVM capabilities um, to Cardano. But uh, with this IBC chain, there are also building blocks that you can uh, put on top, uh, which would give us even more EVM capabilities, which seems to be in the next um, hopefully coming bull market cycle, uh, one of the important things to have. It does sound like that's the, the narrative uh, that a lot of uh, conferences are, uh, I'm seeing at the moment. Uh, one in Vietnam uh, talked about uh, multi-chain and interoperability. So this is uh, highly important that um, we uh, are on top of it and have these tools and building blocks to make it all happen. So um, you said we're still in the very early uh, phase of uh, scoping this out, uh, in seeing what's possible, what's not, not possible. Um, so what's your timeline look like for uh, this uh, initial scoping phase and uh, uh, maybe possible delivery of um, a, a first uh, module or a bit of a toolkit to start working on? Yeah. Um, so actually, everyone can can follow what we are doing um, because we, uh, we made the efforts uh, public open source right from the beginning, or let's say almost right from the beginning. Um, so there's a, a repository called I think Cardano IBC Incubator, that's the name. And uh, what we already have achieved is an um, end-to-end demonst demonstrator uh, that lets you bring up your own Cosmos SDK-based chain, your own private Cardano network, and then connect both uh, via IBC. 
um, and the so-called relayers, which are one of the important building blocks uh, of the IBC communication standard. And um, the first implementation that we did was had a bit cumbersome setup on the one hand on the Cardano side, which we now streamlined in the second development phase and got rid of a lot of, yeah, from the engineering point of view, not so nice uh, parts. <laughs> and uh, we are, so basically what we did is we, we kicked out a few of the frameworks that we've been using. So now uh, the maintainability has increased by a lot. On the Cardano side, also the efficiency of the Aiken smart contracts that we've developed to implement uh, those this uh, tenement light client on the Cardano side, it's now much better than in the beginning so that we basically also already achieved deployability on the public Cardano network. So one of the test nets uh, and maybe even even mainnet if someone just wants to try it out. Um, but there's also a fat disclaimer in the repository that please don't don't use it to exchange <laughs> massive amounts of, of assets already uh, via this yeah. technology. And on the, on the Cosmos side, um, there was one shortcoming when it comes to the security assumptions that you get from the Cardano Lite client or Ouroboros Lite client that we have implemented in the first iteration. Just because um, the architecture of the consensus of Cardano is very great when it comes to scalability, especially in the number of uh, validators that can participate in the network. However, what you don't get uh, right out of the box is something called state proofs. So something like uh, that lets you prove, uh, for example, as the Cardano network to an another blockchain network that everything is kind of in order and in accordance um, to, to the actual consensus algorithm. Um, and this is a gap that we are currently trying to solve and we are already pretty far and we'll hopefully have this done by end of June um, to overcome by the application of Mithril, which is this uh, great project from, from IOHK, which basically gives us exactly that. Um, not to the extent like you would have it and you can look it up uh, in, in the Polkadot um, universe with their beefy protocol and fast finality gadget that that they can have but we are getting very very close and the mithril team has has done a lot in the recent weeks actually uh, to support our use case here so going from there what we want to do is work with a couple of community groups um, so that we uh, get an audit of very experienced development teams from the Cardano space um, then also are working with a group that have won a catalyst proposal they are called Vista um, and in the end, of course, I hope that one of the community groups uh, picks up the work that we have done and uh, basically just yeah takes ownership of it and further develops it. But a first step would be that they are trying out what we have built uh, for one of their their applications that they are building. And uh, the team behind the Vista Foundation is pretty well known, I think, in the Cardano space. It's around Adam Dean, uh, Lloyd Duhan. And uh, so I expect the guys are, are knowing what they are doing and will tell us for sure where we are still lacking in terms of developer experience and the like. So that's one of the points we also want to improve. Timeline-wise, um, it all depends a bit of how things are progressing with a Mithril client, but the rough plans are that we... Uh, yeah, it's always... It's always a bit <laughs> difficult to, to commit to something like that, but we are hope that we are mainnet deployable by the end of Q3 or roughly around the time of the uh, Cardano Summit because there's also a nice event before the Cardano Summit called the Cosmo Wars where all the Cosmos-based projects come together and uh, everyone in their ecosystem is already super excited about that Cardano is doing those efforts, which is on the one hand pretty cool, but just from my engineering point of view, I think uh, <laughs> that's where I'm trying to heavily manage expectations. Yeah, okay. Sounds like you're having a lot of fun, that's for sure. Like th this, all, all this work is pretty exciting. It's on the edge. It's it's brand new stuff and you know dependencies on Mithril and uh, Showcase, hopefully at the Cosmosverse thing. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll in for a very exciting 2024, that's for sure, especially if you guys can... Uh, 
hit those timelines and, and get it all delivered. So I'm really excited about this. And you've left me with a lot of references and uh, research to follow up myself. So I'll, I'll go through all that and I'll put links and references down below. So if anyone else wants to learn a little bit more about uh, everything that we're talking about, um, we can go through it and uh, learn a little bit more ourselves. Now, I'd, I'd love to get, um, uh, we talked about all these technicals, uh, all these uh, things that you're trying to achieve. But I'd love to get a picture, a painted picture of the end result of having all of this built. So for the user, the listener that just listened through all this and a lot of it went over their head, at the end of all this development, what will they see in terms of interoperability and ADAPT maybe using it? Let's say, let, let's consider two user groups. One is let's call them the normal world Cardano user without any specific technical knowledge. At best, um, in the end, we enable our Cardano wallets uh, to just support cross-chain asset transfer so that, for example, you can exchange your NFTs or your assets that you're having in your Cardano wallet already um, and just mix it up with assets from other ecosystems, from, for example, from the Cosmos space. That's, that's one of the things that you will hopefully get out of it. Um, the other thing is, if you are a startup or a business uh, that's working in the Cardano space, and like, for example, the guys from, from World Mobile, they started off, for example, with uh, the Cosmos SDK and then implemented their own means of communicating between uh, their blockchain and the Cardano mainnet, um, but they now migrated to a different blockchain SDK. But whatsoever, what you will get is you uh, you can bring up your application specific sidechain with, for example, the Cosmos SDK or actually every other blockchain SDK that also supports the IBC standard. And then you can just use our framework if you want to exchange information uh, with the Cardano network, like if you consider use cases from the supply chain industry, um, where you're gathering and collecting a lot of events uh, that are happening, and then potentially, while you want to keep those events on that side chain, you potentially want to leverage the, the high level of reliability and decentralization of the Cardano network and put some data aggregates, like, for example, carbon emissions and something like that, and report it on the Cardano mainnet, um, or just save the state of your side chain on the Cardano mainnet just to inherit this huge level of security that you get from it, um, then you can just use this framework out of the box. And um, there is not much that you would, more that you would need to do other than configuring your use case and then bringing it up and, and off you go, basically. All right, brilliant, Sebastian. Thank you for that uh, explanation. It's always good to have that uh, in the interviews as well so people get um, a, a broad understanding of what this tech can do for them as well. Um, any final words, anything else that we need to know about uh, what you guys are playing around with here? So if it's about the, uh, the sidechain uh, and interoperability, uh, just a call to action uh, for all the community groups out there who's interested in it, just reach out to us. I'm um, happy to, to have a chat already talking, like said, to, to a couple of community projects. And it's always, um, it's always nice to connect and see where, where there are some synergies uh, where we can help each other. Yeah, maybe that, right. that works as final words. That is brilliant. And I'll put your uh, contact details or some sort of uh, contact form so people can contact you sure. and uh, start playing around with the code and stuff that you're doing. I, I'm pretty sure it's all on GitHub anyway, so they can uh, access it all, all there. Yes, definitely. All right. Brilliant, Sebastian. Thank you so much for joining me on this interview and taking us through what you guys are building with the Cosmos SDK. Thank you very much, Peter.